Today in the studio, folks, as always, I got a real treat for you. Victor Rancor, what's happening? Right, what's going on, Brad? Thanks for having me on. Folks, if you guys don't know who this is, you're about to. This dude's a rocking and rolling entrepreneur. This dude, four, what, four or five years ago? So I started my business four years ago, but I've been in this industry about seven now. Yeah, but well, you started it four years ago. You're already busting 40 mil. Yes, sir. Over a little over forty million. Uh, this year we're pacing for about twenty. In million. four years. Four years. Yeah. And not only that, you you started the 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 industry go to event of the year called Service Rocket. Is mm -hmm. that what it's called? Yeah, Service Rocket. Yeah, so service, service Rocket. Which, by the way, folks, if you guys are in the HVAC or any kind of home services industry, I, I, I it's going to help a lot of people. Not just HVAC, but it is for technically HVAC industry. Yeah. yeah. I mean, ideally it'd be our, you know, HVAC contractor, sales reps, uh, even their, their operators inside the business that want to come out learn how to scale the business, how to build better culture, how to sell more product. Anybody that wants to come out is going to get an experience they never get to experience before. And dude, this isn't just a normal event. You put some money behind it. You're not playing around. Yeah, man. I mean, we're about 1.1 million into it. And if you've ever thrown an event, you already know there's going to be some more, ex some more expenses coming up. So I don't like to do shit small. Yeah, it's going to be good. It's here in Las Vegas, Nevada, October what? It's the 20th through 22nd at a resort world. 20 through 22nd. You got a, you know, a bunch of kick-ass speakers, me included, by the way, folks. If you ever want to see me come out and lay it down live, make sure you get to this service rocket. But Victor Rancor, Victor at Victor underscore Rancor, R-A-N-C-O-U-R is where you follow him. I don't see a website for you. Uh, this would be uh, servicerocketnetwork.com, uh, or you can follow my podcast, which is Service Rocket Podcast. There you go. That's how you find this dude. But man, dude, four years to get to 40 million, that's pretty damn good. Yeah, man. I, you know, just like anybody else that's ever started a business, I had no plan going in. I had an entrepreneurial seizure. My brother's here in the, in the studio with us. Uh, me and him were working together. My boss at the time, I was a top salesman at the company. My brother was the new technician. And he started talking shit to my brother. So I said, hey, dude, you can talk shit to my brother. You're going to have some problems. Uh, he didn't listen to me too well. So, you know, me and him were, me and him and a buddy were drinking some beers at a pizza shop one night. My buddy's like, why don't you just start your own company? I was like, you know what? I will start my own company. So that night I went home, spent three hours on my, actually on my living room floor, laying on my stomach, writing down names for companies, right? And I finally came up with a name. I said, hey, I'm going to do it. Five days later, I didn't have a license. Didn't know what the fuck I was doing. Didn't know how to start a business. And I just said, hey, I went and quit my job making over half a million a year selling AC. And I just quit my job and started a business. So um, from there, we started with about 10,000 cash, a couple of shitty trucks, and then very quickly became one of the top companies in the country. Dude, but you, it was still AC though. Yeah, just AC, yeah. So so again, you said, you know, it, it's it's better that you already knew what you were doing. You just weren't doing it for yourself. Yeah, so, you know, like I was telling you before the, we jumped on here, I got in this industry about seven years ago. I didn't know what the hell HVAC stood for. I didn't know what, uh, I didn't even know what the hell, what I was looking at on an air conditioning unit. What does it stand for? Uh, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So yeah, once I, you know, I got into it. I had a buddy of mine. He, he, uh, he actually got into it before me. He showed me his pay stub and I figured he's a retard. If he can make that much money, I got to go figure out what's going on. So. So he's your probably buddy showed you a check and you said, holy shit, if this dipshit can do it, I can do it. A hundred percent, man. He came to, he actually came to my Super Bowl party. I was like, man, how's that new job going? He's like, dude, it's going great. He pulled out his pay stub in his pocket. He must've been proud of the most money he's ever made in his life. So he, he showed it to me and I'm like, literally the next day I was like, Hey, just give me a fucking interview. I'm gonna go over there and start working. I was like, what's that movie? Uh, the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah. <laughs> you showed me that paycheck. Yeah, was, that was me. Well, dude, it's a good thing you did it. And so, and so you went and got a job, you learned what you're doing. You became top salesman. You were making good money, 40, 50 grand a month selling air conditioning. Oh yeah. See, like, where was I, dude? My dumb ass was on a car lot <laughs> thinking I was making all the money there was. Has there always been that kind of money in the AC space? Yeah. The, you know what there has, it's one of those like quiet ones you don't really know about, but yeah, there's, I mean, especially here in Las Vegas, I got a buddy making over a million a year selling AC here in Vegas, in Vegas. Just knocking on doors. Where are you getting the leads? Dude, the leads are giving feed to him. So this company's marketing and they, they market, give them, give them leads. He shows up to the house and, and he sells them. Cause I mean, especially in Vegas, dude, you don't fuck around with air conditioning. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're out here and it's 115 degrees, you're going to buy whatever the fuck's in front of you. You don't even care what it is. Like, just tell me what color and don't even care what color it is. They install that shit tomorrow. So he's, he's crushing it out here. He's, he's a beast. Is there like, if someone were to ask me what kind of air conditioning unit would you prefer my answer would be train yeah now the only reason is because for some reason i know that one 
Well, that's, it's all about good marketing, right? That's right. You know, it's just like anything else. Like everybody wants Brad Lee because you market yourself well. So there's, you know, any, every one of the air conditioners are literally, they're built the same way. They have the same fucking parts. They, all they do is they take different pieces from all the different manufacturers and put a different shell on it. So every AC is the same, but I, whatever one I'm selling is the best fucking air conditioner that's ever been made. Now, did you develop the pitch and the presentation that you got to be number one or did someone teach you? So I had a couple of mentors. One of them is going to be speaking at my event too. He's, you know, he sells seven, $8 million a year. Um, I started out the, probably the best home service contractor in the country. So they're a billion dollar business now. Um, so they had their processes when I got there. Uh, but the, over the three years that I spent at that company, I kind of perfected the processes, changed them, kind of molded into what I do. So now they actually do what I do uh, after I left there. So yeah, I took some of their processes, but just like anything else, man, you take a little bit from everybody and you make it your own. And and now I've kind of perfected it and I teach people all over the country how to do it. AC people? AC people, yeah. So if I got AC dogs out there listening, they they can reach out to you and grow their revenue, even if they don't come to this event. But coming to this event would be the wise thing. If you're in the home service space and you don't come to this event, you know, there's, there's something wrong with you. Like literally if you come here, it's going to change the way you do business. You're going to sell more air conditioners. Your business is going to run better. It's, I, I don't throw little events and I don't throw bullshit events either. So it's all the whole time is going to be content that you can actually go use. That's actually why I put the event on a Friday and Saturday. So there's less time between the event and when you go back to work to implement shit. Why, when do you go back to work? Go back to work on Monday and you're going to be ready to go. So you got one day to go start thinking how you're going to implement it. Monday, you got to get to work. That's right. So, and, and you said, uh, you got some VIP shit going on too. Oh yeah. So we got, uh, we got some VIP stuff. We got Joe Montana is going to be there. So if you're a VIP guest, um, you get to actually do a meet and greet with Joe Montana. You come in, sign some footballs, a little private breakfast. Um, also I got some after parties. So the first night I got a, a black tie event. Uh, this is only for the VIP and party pass guests. So we're going to have a live band, cigar rollers. You get to meet and mingle with all these, uh, some of the top people in this industry. And then the last night I got a run DMC is going to DJ the last night and be playing. I uh, rented out the whole nightclub over at or the outdoor nightclub at uh, resort world. Nice dude. I might come by for a cigar. Oh, you're going to want it. Um, so ultimately you got this job. You started kicking ass. You learned everything. Somebody was talking shit about this dude. Yeah. About my brother right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and you said, Hey dude, don't be talking shit. And so what'd he say? He said, well, he told me to kind of stay in my place. Right. So this guy's living in Hawaii and I'm running his entire business in Southern California. And, you know, I came from the company. I left the company I was at to come work for this guy. He paid me a lot of money, gave me a big ass signing bonus. I still remember it was kind of crazy because, you know, I grew up with not a bunch of money and I just left the company I was at that trained me. This guy recruited me. He's, and I remember I went to breakfast with him, right? Never met him before in my life. I go to breakfast with him. He's like, hey, I want to bring you on. He's like, come by, check out my shop. So we go check out his shop and I'm getting ready to leave. And he said, and before I leave, he's like, so when are you ready? I'm like, you never made a fucking offer. Like, you got to put an offer on my plate. So within 24 hours, he, sa- he says, hey, you know, actually right then and there, he said, go pack your bags, tell your wife and kids you're going to go to Hawaii. So he flew me and my family out first class to Hawaii. And I remember on the way out there, my wife's like, hey, old, old white dudes only fly dudes out to places for one reason, right? So she's like, you better not have to cuddle with this guy tonight or some shit. So, so that happened. And uh, so I flew him out there. He paid me a bunch of money. And he said, hey, go run my business. So I was running everything from, I was the service manager, the sales manager. I was the top sales guy. So I was out running calls from, you know, I'd get to the office at six in the morning and I'd work 15, 16 hour days. I'd be in customers' houses at 10 o'clock at night selling air conditioning and then go back the next morning and have to run the, run the meetings and stuff. So. So he fucked up. So he, he, he worked he your balls off though. Worked my balls off for somebody else to build his dream. And, and then finally, like I said, I never planned on starting a business, but you know, I'm glad I did. Yeah. So, so when he talked shit and you finally said, fuck this, you just opened up your own version of what he's doing and yeah. started and, and continued. Yeah. So actually the, the company I started at is probably the best company run company in the country Then I go work for this dude. And I got to see the shitty end of the industry, like how to not run a business one oh one. Uh, so I got to pick and choose some of the stuff from the good company and then knew exactly what not to do with my own business. So for me, it was worth, it was worth the spending the time there and get to understand like, Hey, don't treat your employees like this. Don't do stuff like this. And, and I, I learned a lot during that time. What if there's people listening that want a job you hiring? Uh, we're always hiring. So I got a, uh, we're in what, 10 different States now. So if you're in Florida, Texas, Kansas city, um, where are we else? Kansas Georgia is not a state. Oh, well, I don't know what the hell it was in Missouri. Kansas, Kansas city, Missouri. Yeah. So we're in Georgia, Utah. I'm just dicking with you. Don't worry. Oh, it's all good. I don't, I don't need to know maps. I know how to count cash. So <laughs> that's, I don't know maps either. I was never good at biography. 
But yeah, so if you're, you're looking for a job, my main location down in Southern California, you know, that's, that's our large location. You can come work for me every single day. Um, but if you're, if you sell air conditioning, you fix air conditioning, or you can install air conditioning, I'm definitely hiring. So are you, are you still out in the field or no? No, I don't, I don't go out in the field anymore. Um, you know, I still, I still train my guys daily. So, you know, I, I'm a big, big believer in training. So if we train four days a week, communication skills, mostly on um, what zoom or something. No, they come in the office. So I go in every How morning, in 10 different States. Oh, for, for my main location in California, I do so that. So you're only training one team that way? One team Let that way. Let me ask you a question. Is that team the top team? That's one of the top teams, yeah. Because if you were training the top team uh, and everybody in the other places, like why aren't they there training? It's a good question. I haven't thought about that. But I, I think that's something I probably should get on. <laughs> well, we can help you with that here at Lightspeed, you know. Yes, sir. But even if not Lightspeed, just Zoom meetings and stuff. Oh yeah. Cause like, d- dude, you might be the secret sauce. Now, if you can document all your processes and spread them around, around those 10 you, uh, locations, well, you're going to do 10 times better. Yeah. And that's, and that's what we, we're doing currently with the app right now. So every one of my companies has my training app. So service hero Academy app, um, in can there, anyone get that or just your companies, anybody can buy it. So we have over 2000 contractors on it currently, um, and it's growing every single day. We don't even market it. People just kind of come and buy it. Where do they go to get that? Just app store, uh, service hero Academy.com. If you want to sign up so you can download the app inside the app store, but to actually get access to the content, they'd have to go and meet with somebody to go through a demo, how to work and everything. Dude, you're like a regular business man. You started out like grinding bricks or something? Yeah. So, you know, before I got in this industry, I was, uh, well, you know, backtrack about 10 years ago, I was living in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, you know, I just went through a pretty rough patch in my life. I actually was out here in Vegas. My brother's right here. I blew every penny he had. He was out and he was in Afghanistan. He left me his debit card and I came to Vegas and I emptied the whole debit card while he's in Afghanistan. So I, I left Vegas with no money. I had to sell my car just to be able to pay my brother back. And at that point, I was like, I got to get the fuck out of here. So I moved out to Cleveland, Ohio. I had some family out there. I was like, I want to get away from the shit I was doing. I uh, moved out there, uh, found out that it's not, it wasn't my friends out here's fault. It was just my fault because I was a degenerate. But I moved out to Cleveland, and that's kind of where I cut my teeth in sales. So I was actually, my uncle's like, hey, I, got an, I work at an oil change place. I'll give you a job. So I was the guy down in the pit doing like those fast, like a Jiffy Lube type place. I was the guy down in the pit getting oil splattered in my face every day. And I would listen and the guys up top were the ones that made a little bit more money. Right. But they had to learn how to sell shit. So anytime you go through an oil change place, they're trying to sell you filters and transmission flushes and batteries and bullshit. Right. So I sat down there in the pit and I was just listening to them talk. And I'm like, fuck, these guys suck. So I went and I said, Hey, can you guys give me an opportunity to move up top? And I turned the 32, the, it was, there's 32 stores in this company that we are the 32nd ranked in sales. We were the dead last. Uh, within mon- one month of me being up there, we became the number one oil change place in Northeast Ohio. What do you think the difference was? Communication. So I just learned how to get the customer to understand why, what's in it for me, right? Just like anything else, if you're going to be a, um, a salesperson, it can't be what's in it for the salesperson, what's in it for the customer. So I started communicating on how, if we don't do this, you know, this, this, and this could happen. And I, like I said, I got good at it and I started training everybody there how to do it for a whole six seventy five an hour. They lost you too. Oh yeah, I left. See, folks, even if you have good employees, you know, you can lose them just by not appreciating what you got, giving people opportunity. So, but you're not out in the field anymore. Are you, you're, you're just kind of, you know, making a bunch of dough, leading the people, training the people and opening shops. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I do now. And, you know, my big thing is trying to, trying to help as many people as I can. So I, I'm able to help through business coaching and training. And that's kind of where my passion's at. I got three little kids, so I'm always pretty busy with them too. Where do you live? I'm in Huntington Beach, California. How do you deal with the California government bullshit? Well, first, I don't go anywhere besides for work and home. <laughs> but uh, other than that, man, I just, you know, my kids are homeschooled because I'm not going to go through all the vaccination and all the other bullshit. Um, and so we got my kids are homeschooled. My wife stays at home with the kids. And we just focus on making money. And everyone's like, well, the taxes are high. I'm like, well, I just make more money so I can live in nice weather. That is some nice weather, dude. Dude, it's 75 every day. It's beautiful. Dude, I'm telling you, you know, I, t- I said I'll never live to California. So my wife loves Nashville. So I'm like, I'll get you a house in Nashville. So we're down there and it's hotter than balls too. And I'm like, babe, we just got another spot. So when it's hot here, we go here. It's just hot and wet and muggy. I said, we need to go someplace where we get out of the heat and it's like 75, 80 degrees. So we started looking around. There is no place except basically California that is like that. Yeah. She's like, I won't live in California. And I thought to myself, well, we don't need to actually live there. (laughs) How about we just stay there from like 
June to September every year. That's what we might do. And, and honestly, it's, you know, I've traveled a lot and I keep telling myself, obviously I, I'm not, we're about my businessman. So obviously I don't abide by the rules in California. I don't, I don't like, I don't like the politics there, but everywhere I look is sweaty and hot. Like why would I, I would rather spend more money and be comfortable my whole life than have to go sweat my ass off for no reason. That is a wise, wise decision. I might be joining you now. Um, after not having money and now having what well, seems like you got some money if you do a 40 million. Oh yeah. What, what's the difference? Honestly, the only, the difference is, you know, when my, like on my way here, my brother lost a camera, I go buy a new camera right away. I don't have to fucking look at the price. But I mean, other than that, man, I haven't changed much. I just, I'm the same way. I just grind nicer every day. toys, nicer toys, nicer cars. And you know, God, my family's taken care of. We eat well, you know, we, my family's all hundred percent organic and vegan and shit. So we got a, my food bill every month's ridiculous. If you saw it, you guys would probably freak out. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we get to eat nice and get to, get to take care of my family, my friends, um, you know, get to go do whatever I want pretty much. What about friends? Did friends come out of the woodwork now? Oh yeah. Friends. So, you know, friends, family, everybody, all of a sudden they want a job or they want something. And it's, you know, I made a strict rule. And if you guys ever do become successful and I hope a lot of you guys do on this podcast, I don't lend no money to family period. I don't care if it's my dad, my mom, I just won't do it anymore. Just strict, strict, cut them off because it's going to start an argument. And you're going to be pissed off. Well, so, so here I'll amend that because I did the same thing, but I don't, I just won't lend. Yeah. I true. might give you, but I, but I don't lend. Yeah. I'm the, I'm the same way, man. It's like, and I, it sucks because, you know, you get people ask you and it just like, it makes me sick to my stomach because I know they probably need it. And I'll, I'll give people money all the time, you know, my brother, my mom and give them money. But yeah, anytime you loan somebody money, it's just like, all of a sudden, that's the quickest way to make somebody disappear. Yeah, well, that's another, you know, lesson I teach people. Like, well, people, I, I lo I'll loan you money once. You know, and if I ever loan you money again, it's going to be based on did you did you pay that back? So sometimes when your buddies or your relatives say, you know, hey, can I borrow a hundred bucks or whenever it's cheap, like, you know, when people call me, it's like, can I borrow some money? How much? You know, I've had literally people be like, you know, two hundred bucks. Oh, sure. You know, I've had people say 200,000 and I'm like, for what you got a business plan da, da, da. like, it's, it's going to be a lot tougher to get that out of me. But the cool part is the dude that got the 200 bucks and never paid it back. Never have to ever give them another dime again yeah. for $200. Yeah. It's worth it. It's, sometimes it's paid and pay him to go away. So, so dude, what's your day look like then? Like describe your day in the morning. You just getting up, going surfing. What are you doing? No, man. You know, I'm, I'm 33, so I go a little nuts. I just want to work all the time. So I get up in the morning. Um, you know, I like to listen to, to audio books in the morning, stretch, work out. Uh, from there, I get to the office in the morning. So I do a lot of, um, I do some Zoom trainings and stuff. So I got people that pay me to do uh, morning Zoom trainings from like 7 to 9 a.m. So I got about a couple hundred contractors that pay me monthly to do that. So I'll do some Zoom training in the morning. I'll go to my office, run a meeting, kind of see where the numbers are at motivate my sales guys. So like, if you have a business, like I text every one of my sales guys individually, Hey, good job yesterday. Hey, is there anything I can do for you? So I'm really big on trying to, to make my employees happy from the sales guy all the way down to the installers. Uh, so now like I try to reach out to every employee every day. Hey, is there anything, is there any way I can make your life better? Any way I can make your work life better? So I work on that stuff now. Um, and then, you know, my podcasts and things like that. And, and we're all, you know, constantly always looking for new acquisitions. So that's kind of what we do every day too. Well, that's another thing. People that are listening, maybe you want to sell your business. This yeah. dude, this dude's acquiring businesses now. So it's a little bit different. So, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of private equity in the home service space right now. There's, I mean, companies are selling 12, 14, 16. I had a buddy in Vegas here just sold for 21 X, a company called Gettle. So they just sold X what EBITDA or EBITDA. Yeah. So he sold for almost $800 million. So there's a lot of money in the space. Was it Gettle? Gettle. Yeah. Because I think I met this. I don't know if it was a CEO or something at, at some event one time. And he's like, yeah, we need to hook up. You know, I'm in Vegas. I'm like, Oh, you're in Vegas. What do you own? He said, Gettle. I don't know if he was a CEO or the owner, but maybe that's the same dude. And he just sold. Yeah. It's Ken Goodrich, man. He's been, he's that is the, him. He's the OG. So he just sold. He just sold. Well, this is the third time he sold, but he's been buying and selling businesses for 30 years here in Vegas and nationally. So he's, he's like uh people call me the next Ken Goodrich. So that guy's the OG. Yeah. I dude, I should have freaking, I should have connected with him more sooner. So when I first started my business, you know, I, I started posting a lot on social media and I created a following and Ken's one of the guys that followed me. Right. So I got a phone call from my distributor that said, Hey, you want to go to the Super Bowl? This is 2020 49ers versus the chiefs. 
I never, dude, I've never been to the Super Bowl. I'm like, yeah, I want to go to the Super Bowl. I'm like thinking they're going to fly me out there, give me some tickets. They're like, okay, cool. Well, you're going to fly out on a private jet. We're going to go out to, we're going to go out to Miami and go to the Super Bowl. Uh, you're going to go with Ken Goodrich. So I'm like, fuck. Okay, cool. I didn't realize at the time, obviously he was trying to buy my business. He wanted to buy me so I can help him acquire more businesses because I was creating such a big following. So I flew out to, uh, so we get on this private jet here in Vegas. We fly out, pick some people up in, in um, San Antonio, fly out to Miami. We get to Miami. They gave us a, we had this mansion penthouse to stay in Airbnb, the big old giant house. Next thing you know, he's like, Hey, go get dressed. And next thing you know, like an hour later, I'm on a hundred foot yacht going to a private Island for a show for uh, post Malone, post Malone show. We get there. I'm like, cool. We're just going to the show. Well, no, we weren't going to the fucking show. We were sitting 10, probably eight feet away from post Malone on stage. The private, like private, like literally fenced off area. And I'm like, holy shit, I never been nothing like this. Right. So I party all night with post Malone. They're coming over. They're coming over and sitting down in the fucking, in the booth here in Miami. And I'm like, dude, this is a whole nother lifestyle. I'll never even, ex- I never explained. I remember the second night we showed up a little bit late and you know, who Kyle Bush is the NASCAR yeah, driver. Sure. Well, for some reason he's sitting in our booth. So Ken walks up and says, Hey, you need to get the fuck out of my booth to Kyle Bush. And I'm like, holy shit, who is this guy? I didn't, I didn't really know Ken that well. I just went on this trip with him. But yeah, he's he's the OG man. That guy's got some stupid money. He owns his properties that he owns here in Vegas are insane. He owns almost all the the commercial real estate. Right on. I love hearing stories like that. I was talking to him, and it, I forget what he told me, but there was something, you know, different about Gettle how he did it, or maybe he bought it and sold it a couple times. Or yeah, there's a story. So he actually created a story. So this is a beautiful part of branding, right? So branding is a big part of any business or even your personal brand like you, like we were talking about earlier. So he went, he bought Gettle Air Conditioning. So Gettle used to be one of the largest air conditioning manufacturers in the world, right? And they were really big here in the, in the, in the West Coast. Well, they went out, they're going out of business. So they were a manufacturer. They weren't like a home service company when he went out to your house. Ken, at this point, he had just exited a couple other businesses and he heard that Gettle was for sale. So he's like, oh, fuck, I got to buy it. Like, I'm going to buy this company. So he buys Gettle and he turns it into a home service company. So then he starts saying that he's manufacturing air conditioning units, right? And so he goes to this guy called, his name's, uh, they call him the Wizard of Ads. And they create this whole backstory for him. So he's talked about this this kid with the flashlight thing, right? So they built this back, this backsplash to it. He went to this other guy that did branding on the trucks. that had the little kid with the flashlight, made it all up. So they made the story up. And then he started pitching that story on all his radio ads and it created this whole thing. So he, he grew that business massively. It's only been eight years since he bought it. He's like bought it for pennies and sold it for, you know, 700 and some million dollars or some shit. Damn. What's he doing now? He still runs it. He still owns a piece of it. So they're still buying and acquiring companies. He's trying to get the country. That's what he calls it. I wonder if I put his name in my phone. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Just you gotta out get of curiosity. On yeah. I'd, I'd put him on the podcast in a heartbeat. Good rich, right? Yep. Right there. There it is, yeah. Dude, you know how like, because I always tell people, you know, relationships are literally the source of money. So if you want more money, you need more relationships. And then you meet people, but you don't follow up. Like, dude, I could have been his bestie by now. Who knows? I could have been invested with him by now, sold out with him by now, but I didn't reach out like I was supposed to. Well, you know, it's funny you say that. So like I got a partner, like I told you earlier, Bill Pulte, right? Pulte, Pulte Homes. Pulte Homes. That's a sixteen billion dollar business, right? Well, I, I'm I have this following on social media. Some guy, Bill Pulte, reaches out to me on social media and Messenger. I blew him off for months, and he just kept, "Hey, man, let's talk. Hey, let's talk." Hey, and you're let's lucky talk. he did, because most of those guys won't. Oh yeah. So you know, and I and I just blew him off. Finally, I started talking to him, and I realized, find out when who he is, and now now we're partnered together and buying businesses, and you know, it's made me millions of dollars just by answering back on that social media. Yeah, dude, I might have screwed up with old Mr. Goodrich. Well, it's funny. Me and my brother were at his, we went to his shop this morning. We woke up this morning, went to go check out his Las Vegas location. If You'll see him again one of these days? Oh, yeah. Say, hey, do you remember Brad Lee? He probably might, doesn't even remember me. He was probably being polite. Because we were, we were at uh, some event where I was speaking, and Richard, or no, Robert Kiyosaki was oh, speaking. And Robert introduced me to him. And said, hey, you guys are both from Vegas. And we exchanged and said, yeah, let's connect. But that was just like pleasantries. Yeah. So he might not remember me, but say, hey, you remember old Brad Lee? Yeah, he, he follows me on social media, so he knows I'm here. So probably he'll probably figure out who it is. Say, Ken, damn it. I, I, I should have reached out to you. I apologize. <laughs> I didn't know you were a bigwig. Oh, yeah. I thought I thought personally, you know, he was a bigwig then too. Because someone said, like, this dude's this dude's a real deal. But dude, you make him sound like like a genius. Yeah, he owns, he owns Vegas, man. So for this, he like, he is, you know, I, so I started a business here in Vegas last year around this time. 
and I went into it all wrong. I didn't do all the planning for, for uh, ahead of time. I hired this top sales guy. I told you he was selling a million dollars in air conditioning. I said, hey, let's partner. And if you partner with that guy, you can build a business. We partnered with him. We launched the business early. We were waiting for the licensing stuff. We decided to launch the business like uh, three weeks early. Well, Ken found out. Next thing I know, I got the license board on my ass. Tell me they're going to go like he's an old school gangster. Like he, he, he chewed me up and spit me out of Vegas in fucking about 10 minutes. So I don't fuck with Ken. <laughs> Dude, what if, what if someone wants to start an AC company? What's the barriers of entry? I um, mean, if it depends on what you want, man, if you're, if I was to say, Hey, start an AC company, I would go buy one. So, you know, the easiest way to start a business is to already have customers, right? I started from scratch. So I had to literally from day one had to, you know, when I started my business, the first thing I did had no idea how to start these business. I just texted every single person I've ever had a contact with in my phone, texted every one of them. Hey, I started an AC business. And within 10 minutes, it was August, 2018 within 10 minutes. Hey dude, my air conditioner is broken. So that's how I started my business. And then I made my first sale that day. And then ever since then, it's just been kind of snowballing. But if you're going to start an AC company, um, like we were talking about, build your personal brand. I mean, it's just so many people call me from my social media. You know, they might not call me today, but their air conditioner is going to break two years from now. And they see me posting all day and they're going to call me. So that's kind of how I've been able to scale so quick. And you got all these followers at Victor underscore Rancor. Yeah. So my, my main following is on, uh, on Facebook. I, you know, I try to do Instagram and all the other stuff, but Facebook is where most people come in facebook's filled with a bunch of fools last time i checked oh yeah like every time i go to facebook dude like i'll post something on instagram or tiktok and it'll get freaking rave reviews and everyone loves it and then my team will throw it on facebook dude and i'll get all the hate in the world like facebook is not friendly to me it's it's an older it's an older demographic right so like you like you're exciting like for me if i'm a young guy i'm watching brad i want to be like fucking brad right and i feel like so facebook i I always found Facebook a place to make money because people on Facebook are usually a little bit older. They got money. So I'm like, for me, I'm like, I can go on Instagram, but they don't have what I want. I want someone that's got my cash. So what about LinkedIn? You know what? I just started getting into LinkedIn. Uh, I didn't really know much about it. I just, I feel like, you know, I was talking to to Ryan Stuman about this. He's like, dude, just figure out the one you're good at. Just fucking hammer and hammer the shit out of that, that platform. Right. It's going to be hard for me to go build a TikTok following Instagram following, but I already got Facebook and it's like a honey hole of cash. I don't need to fuck around. It's like, a, it's like having a hot wife already. I don't need to go fuck around with all her friends, you know? Well, no, I kind of disagree with that. <laughs> Which not, part? not the wife part, but, yeah, but, so. but you, you, you know, I would do them all. Yeah. I, I like, post don't on just all hammer one, dude. If you, if you got one hammered, keep hammering it, but now figure out the next one and figure out the next one and figure out the next one. Cause right now, if you had TikTok blowing up, which is way easier than Facebook, it's the same exponential growth factor. Yeah. So to so so to sit in your honey hole and say I don't need nothing else. That's just being satisfied, which is cool if the, if you're satisfied. But what I would recommend, because I know you're not, what I'd recommend is now now keep this one banging. But now go figure out TikTok, because dude, TikTok's easy. I got over a million followers on TikTok in in eight months. That's freaking nuts. The, the algorithm's ridiculous. So so I'd go figure out TikTok, and then I'd go figure out freaking LinkedIn, and then I'd go figure out every single one of them. YouTube? Are you on YouTube? We have a little bit of YouTube. Dude, so. If you're not on YouTube, you're nuts because people type in air conditioning, how to fix air conditioning. You have funny videos, any kind of videos, instructional videos on air conditioning, dude, you will go huge on YouTube as well. And YouTube's the mother of them all. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's my brother's here. And I got, now I have a full-time videographer. So we're like, we've been working harder to start cutting some stuff. I've been actually talking to the girl that, that you use as well. Mandy? Yeah, Mandy. Dude, yeah. Mandy will take your footage and and know what to make out of it. That's the, that's the value by the way. Cause yeah. like I had a bunch of editors, I would just give my footage to a bunch of editors over here on this other side of the building. And I'd get back, you know, well done edited videos cause they're editors. But yeah. like, I would be like, what's the point of that? I'm like, well, all you did was made a video of me saying this, like, what was the point? What was the beginning? It, it there's no context. Yeah. Well, what Mandy does is they can get footage like this where it's just all day footage they go through and they see what's valuable and then they put the right headlines on it and then they put it together and now it's worth some. So I think that's, that's something I found too. Cause I had a videographer and he made these like beautiful videos and a couple minutes long. Right. And I would get done with these videos. I'd pay him to make these videos and I'd post them in maybe a couple hundred views or whatever. Right. But I take my phone and take a fucking selfie and start talking into it. And I get a thousand or 2000 views. And I'm like, what the fuck? I just paid three grand for this video and no one wants to see it. It's a great video. 
but people are like instant gratification. They want 30 second clips. They want to kind of get to the point. So I'm starting to learn a little bit of that and how to, how to attack that audience. How did you know Mandy was my girl? So I talked to you. Oh, did I tell you that? <laughs> yeah, you told me. So that was the oh. first thing I've reached out to Brad and I'm like, dude, I want you to speak at my event. And a buddy of mine introduced me to you on Instagram, texted you and I started talking to you. He said, yeah, I'll do the event. And then uh, I said, hey, who do you use for social media? And you texted me. So I got a hold of her. See, dude, that's a man of action. I, I don't know if you pulled the trigger, but if I were you, I would. Because yeah. again, they're, 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 they're not just, it's not just editors. It's not just, you know, processors. Like they've got eyes for what value looks like. They can, they can help you with that big time. Oh yeah. So I see like in the future, you just growing to dominate that industry. The question is, is are you going to get outside of that industry? That's the plan, man. I just, uh, yeah. So I was talking to my, I was talking to my team over the last couple of days. Like, how do I get, how do I, you know, I was talking to Ryan about it too. Cause he used to be like, I think car salesman or mortgage sales. Right. And I'm like, how do I start expanding out of that thing? So that's kind of what I'm working on now and different business ventures and stuff like that. Cause you know, even if you own, you know, so I'm going to own 1% of this, no one ever owns 1% of shit. So you gotta, you gotta keep kind of spreading out. So right now I'm working on kind of getting out of just the home service space. Well, like what else is there? Like what interests you? Uh, real estate, you know, I like real estate. Um, I mean, I like anything to sales, but you know, one of the things I learned going through this, and I don't know if you've noticed yet, but like trying to go after sales guys, isn't as lucrative as going after business owners, right? Cause the business owners have the cash. So I used to just be the HVAC sales guy. And I, then I found out like quickly, yeah, I can go chase those guys. They'll pay 500 bucks, but a business owner will pay me 50,000 bucks. So like for me now, I have a, you know, if a business owner wants me to come out and do sales training for his team, that's 50,000 to a hundred thousand dollars for two days. So I'm now I've kind of flipped the switch. So anything that I go after is going to go after the guy with the big money, not the little guy. Retarget. Retarget. Yeah. So retarget to the guy that has the cash. Now who in outside of the HVAC are you like, because again, to me, if you're, if you're training, if your business was training in the HVAC business yeah, and to get out of that, it's still training, but now you're training furniture salesmen. How do you transfer the knowledge? As far as like, do you think selling furniture would work the same as selling air conditioning? Yeah. I mean, it, I think selling furniture and selling air conditioning is the same. So for me, the reason why I've been able to grow so fast in the HVAC sales and home service sales is because I've mastered the techniques on an in-home sales process. Yeah. But do you, don't you think it's because it's such a comfort uh, element? Like in other words, I could use a new couch. I'd like a new couch, but I don't need a new couch. Yeah. So if someone tries to sell me a couch, man, let me think about it. I still got a couch, but when AC goes out, bro, cause you're not selling AC to people that have ac sometimes yeah rarely though yeah, they got ac problems that's why they're calling ac people yeah like i've if my air conditioner works dude i don't care what year it is i don't care how old it is i don't need another one yeah if you knocked on my door and said hey i'd like to get your air conditioner so one day it doesn't go out i'd be like i'll wait till it goes out is that most people yeah i would say that's about 80 yeah so when you're knocking on a door of somebody that's needing air conditioning i think there's a big difference because because they need it it's almost like as you're talking, I'm thinking, damn, why did I never go to the air conditioner space? Like they need it or you wouldn't be at their house. Yeah. And I think that's where I, you know, how I do got, you fuck up that deal though? You could fuck it up. I mean, being, we're the highest price on the market. So if, if a company say most companies, so a cheaper company is $8,000, but I'm selling it for 25 to 30,000. I teach that, that, that technician or tech or salesman, how to perceive value, right? How to sell the company, how to sell at a higher margin and a higher, and a higher closing Three rate. Three time though three times. Yeah. I mean, I understand from eight to 10, you know, build the, build the value, sell yourself, yada, 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 but eight to 25, like shit, dude. So, you know, you got to imagine, and, and this is the way I communicate to customers, right? You pay that $8,000. Well, what, who are you buying from or $8,000? You're buying from a, a, probably one guy, maybe a, a company with two employees, right? When you come to me, I got a call center. I got full-time warranty tax. I got badass installers that all they do all day is installing air conditioners. If you call me in the middle of summer, I'm going to be out there within two hours. The other guy ain't coming back. So you got to sell it off that and obviously how it's installed. Have you ever had a, in a, lived in a house with a shitty air conditioner? And then you'd understand. So like I, I try to sell off comfort and hey, look. Is it, you, the, is it the AC or is it the venting? Normally ventilation. It's, it could be both. Um, but a lot of times it's just installation. If you don't install it properly, the thing's going to be loud the whole time you ever own it. It's not going to be as comfortable. Like if you ever gone in and like say it's winter time, right? 
and it's cold outside, you go turn your heater on, what happens? You get a fucking blowtorch blowing on you, right? You just, you get all dried out, you get sick all the time. Well, wouldn't you want a furnace that when you turn it on, you don't even know what's on, you're just warm and comfortable? I sell comfort. So I don't just sell a fucking blowtorch. I'm selling one that you don't even know it's there, but you just feel comfortable in your house. So if you come home from work, do you want to be comfortable or you want a blowtorch on you? Comfortable. Yeah. So, I mean, you can go buy that $8,000 one and you're not going to be ever comfortable in your house you live in. If you come to my house, you don't even know what's on. It's just comfortable. Is that what you want? And people say, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. What about, yeah, but it's three times the money. Well, you know, at the end of the day, what happens if you go with that cheap, you ever made like a, you ever made a decision where you, you made it off price, right? And guess what? Two, three months down the road, you start having issues. Well, guess what? That guy didn't charge you enough money up front. So now he's not going to come back and fix your problems. So now you're, you're going to call me. I'm going to come out there. I won't work on the damn thing. So you're going to be pissed off. No one's going to cover it. And you're going to be ripping the thing out and putting a new one in. Well, he told me there's a warranty on it. Yeah. The taillight warranty, brother. So if, if I'm, if I'm a guy that's charged you, undercharged you, didn't charge you enough money. I only make this much cash. Every time I come back, how much more cash am I losing? Most of the time, and and this is actually a national statistic, 95% of heating and air contractors fail within the first five years. 99% fail within the first 10 years. And the reason why is they don't charge enough money. So they sell a bunch of air, con- air conditioners this year. They installed it like shit. Well, next year, all these people are calling because their air conditioner they installed last year ain't working. That guy's going to quit and go start a new business, right? He's going to shut that shit down and go open a new one. And it happens every single day. But they're calling you eventually. They eventually call me because they're just tired of dealing with the shit. So how many how many times you got to miss work for your fucking broken air conditioner you paid eight grand for? Yeah. Guy keeps coming out, you're missing work, your wife's pissed off, you can't get laid, right? You can't get laid if it's fucking hot in your house. Are you guys in Vegas? Uh, not yet. Why not? It's it's old school town. Oh yeah, Gettle? Gettle, come fuck me well, up. Well, he sold it. Can, he, can you do it now? We'll be back in Vegas, so... Well, Vegas is a good market, dude. You you want you want air conditioning here, no matter what. Yeah, Vegas and Vegas and Arizona are the are the mecca of HVAC. In fact, dude, if like your AC out, if power went out here during the summer, like dude, people would have to leave. Period. Yeah, you can't you can't live here without air, AC. So like, I'd be right where the AC's lovely, dude. I've been up to Oregon where people don't even have AC. Well, that's, you know, where I live in Huntington Beach, half people have AC, half don't. So a lot of- But why would you need it if it's always beautiful? That's, it's, it's, uh, for that, it's just comfort. I mean, some people don't want to, most people want to close their windows and doors and shit now. And, you know, most of the time, and like where I live at, it's mostly heating. So it's heating only houses. So we sell a lot of heaters. How do I generate you leads and make money myself? What do you mean? Like, like, in other words, I ain't an HVAC company. But if, if I had a million people on the bomb squad say, man, I love this guy. And they bought a million a- HVAC units how, and you knew they came from this like that. How do I, how do I set something up where I drive you business and then I just get my piece and then I'm in the HVAC business. You need to be in the business of, of buying businesses. I want to start a new one called real heating and air. There you go. Real well, heating I mean- and air. If you heard Brad right there, so if you're if you're interested in partnering and, and maybe selling or trying to grow your business, reach out to Brad. He'll reach out to me. We'll both own part of your business. We'll teach you how to grow the damn thing. Yeah, if you have a heating business or an air conditioning business, reach out. We'll buy it from you. Yeah, or so partner with you. We'll partner with you. So you know, for me, I like to take minority positions. I want you to keep ownership of the business. But the problem with most of the people that have heating and air companies, they have no idea how to fucking run them. They don't know how to read a P&L. They don't know how to read a balance sheet, how to price themselves correctly. Well, guess what? You partner with me. You're going to get my buying power. So I buy my air conditioners for half the price you buy. You're going to buy it for. So you go pay $3,000. I pay $1,500. So right there, I just saved you $1,500 every single system. And you sell hundreds a year, a thousand a year. That's a lot of fucking money. Not only that, you're selling them for eight thousand. We're selling them for twenty five. Yeah, I'll teach you how to sell them for a hell of a lot, hell of a lot more. And, and you guess know, what? And you know why they're selling them for eight? Because because weak salespeople fall to the level of their training. So yeah. if I don't know how to explain how to get twenty five for this unit that people are, they're getting eight, I don't understand value. I don't understand how to present it in such a way that that warrants the the difference. Yeah, you know, then what do they do? They just fall to price. So what's happening right now, and, and it's it's a gold mine for me because a lot of these guys, they don't know how to charge more. Well, guess what? In the last two years, inflation has caused the price of materials to double. Okay, so my my equipment pricing, everything's doubling on me, but I don't know how to communicate how to go from 8,000 to even 10,000. 
these guys are now their margins were already razor thin. Now they got no margin left because they're buying, they're, they're spending so much on the equipment and they can't communicate how to sell it for a higher price. So now these guys are going out of business because they can't even, they can't even afford to buy the fucking equipment. What's your company out there called? Uh, it's called absolute airflow. So if somebody's in those States, they, they, they know absolute. Yeah. Pretty much anybody in Southern California knows, um, you know, one of the big things when I started and, and, I, I tell my daughter every day, she's about to be eight in September. I told her, you made me a millionaire. So I was, I remember I first started my business. I'm like, how do I get customers? I'm going to go create a fucking radio ad, dude. I'm going to get a lot of phone calls. So I go to the radio station. I record my first radio ad, fucking plays on a Saturday. I'm excited. I'm telling all my friends, listen to the radio ad. I hired all these extra call center people to answer the phones. And guess what? <laughs> nothing. Nothing. The fucking phone didn't ring. And I'm motherfucker. And they have people over at the radio station. I'm like, hey, the fucking phone didn't ring. They're like, it takes time. Well, I don't got fucking time. I'm brand new. My fuck, I'm six months into business. I just gave you all my marketing money that I have. I need fucking calls. So they're like, hey, give it another chance. So I said, okay, I'm getting ready to go to the radio station. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. And I'm trying to think of how the, I got to write my own radio ad. I can't afford for someone to write it for me. So I'm, I'm literally trying to figure out how to write a radio ad. And I walk out of my, get out of my shower. I'm going to my living room and my daughter's going around my house going absolute airflow, absolute airflow. I'm like, you're coming to the fucking station with me. So I took my daughter to the radio station. We wrote the ad in the station and, and she made me a millionaire. So that ad plays everywhere in Southern California knows my daughter. She's on my billboards and all kinds but, of shit. But, but, but in the ad, she was saying it. She says, call my daddy for service. You can trust. And this little mousy voice, she's four years old at the time. And then at the end she goes, absolute airflow. Absolutely. But she says it in her mousy voice and people everywhere they go, my guys like they'll roll the windows down and people are like roll your window down. They start saying it. Or if I have a sales guy in the house and I know it's a radio ad lead, I remember this customer called and my sales guy calls me. He's like, Hey, can I discount this guy? I said, look, the guy puts me on speaker. I said, Hey, look, I'll help you. But just keep in mind, if you don't buy from me, you already said your daughter runs around their house saying my, saying my radio ad. Guess what? If you buy from the other guy and that, and that air conditioner is fucked up, all you're going to hear is your daughter going absolute airflow, absolute airflow. He's like, you're fucking right. Let's just get the damn thing done. Cause I have to listen to it every morning driving to work. That's funny. How many, how many, uh, like poor air conditioning installs happen? So nine out of the 10 units that we change out are less than 10 years old which means they were installed like shit and installing it like shit means that it doesn't last or something doesn't last as long. So normally, so if you go with that cheap contractor, the reason why he's, you know, he, he only offers the cheap unit because that's all he can afford. So imagine you're a contractor, you don't have very much cash, right? Well, I can go buy this really cheap one for 1500 bucks. Or if I buy the nice one, it's going to cost me $5,000 up front. Which one are you going to buy? You're going to buy the cheap one, right? And you're going to install it as quickly as you can to get your money back because you don't have big lines of credit with the vendors and shit like that. So the cheap guy buys the cheapest equipment, installs it as fast as he can so he can try to get his money back so he can go buy another air conditioner for cheap to go install it. So mo most of the cheap guys are buying the, the off-brand shit that no one wants to have in their house anyways. There's no warranty on it or less warranty. So yeah, you usually get a piece of shit. Hmm. Well, did you, you know, kicked ass pretty quickly in the business. So it just shows that you are a, intelligent entrepreneur strategic i'll tell you right now it wasn't all fucking rainbows and cupcakes man i've been you know i've, I've been a couple times i thought i was going bankrupt i've cried myself to sleep i've done you know just so just so you guys know i don't bullshit people like it was rough man i went from i didn't start with capital i didn't know where to get capital i didn't know what to do so i had everything was fucking every day i had to sell if i didn't sell the day i couldn't make payroll if i didn't sell the day i wasn't going to eat so i mean a lot of days i went starving my brother's here and he got to see me i would pay my employees i wasn't paying myself or i'd take my own personal money and pay my employees and, and stuff like that so when you first start out trying to buy trucks and wrap trucks and and market and do all these things cost money well i didn't have money all i knew how was how to sell so guess what my my accountant would come in the morning and said hey we got to make payroll on friday and it's fucking wednesday and I, we don't have enough money. So I'd go put my uniform on. I'd go fucking sell a couple of air conditioners, make sure that shit was installed. And I would make sure. So the, I knew there was one financing company that if if I sold it that day and the customer signed off, I can fund it within 24 hours. All the other ones are like 48 hours. So if I needed money by Friday, that Wednesday, I'm only selling with that financing company. Before I even installed the unit, I'd fucking ran to the fucking, we had to fax the paper and I'd fax the paper and so I'd get paid the next day to be able to make payroll. So no, it wasn't, it wasn't all easy, man. It's been, it was a fucking grind. Like now it's easy. Now I show up every day and life's easy, but there wasn't easy for fucking two or three years. Well, I can tell you, regardless, you were, you arrived. Oh yeah. And I only see from here on out getting bigger, badder and bolder. I'm looking forward to speaking at that event. I want everybody listening to go follow Victor at Victor underscore Rancor. Anything you want to say to the old bomb squad? 
Yeah, man. I mean, if you guys are out there, you're listening to Brad, you know, listen to the shit that he's saying, man. He keeps it real on like most of these fake gurus. I, he's telling you how to keep it real. But main thing is focus on your personal brand. And then you got to show up every fucking day, man. I'm, I'm anybody that's ever met me. I'm on the most relentless motherfucker. I'm up at six in the morning, working all night, seven days a week. I'm on my phone, always introducing myself to new people, always trying to figure out, Hey, can we make a business deal? Can we make another, whatever it is. So grind nonstop. I'm 33. By the time I'm 40, I will be a billionaire. And it's possible. I went from doing oil changes 10 years ago to a multimillionaire and 10 years later. And by 10 years from now, I'm going to be a billionaire. With billionaire partners. With billionaire partners as well. And putting on top rated events. He's bringing in freaking Ed Milet, Joe Montana, uh, Ryan Stewman. There's more, but like yes. a bunch of people. We got a bunch of people, man. I, I want to throw some big events and you know, I, I don't even care if I don't make any money. I'm over a million dollars into this event. I just want everybody to have a good time. Like when you come to my events, you're going to know you're at one of my events because everything is fucking red carpet from beginning to end. We're going to party hard and you're going to learn a bunch of shit. That's what I do. Get your money saved up, boys. We take credit cards. Where do they go buy a ticket to that thing? Uh, go to servicerocketnetwork.com. Um, you can go ahead and put a promo code in there. By the time this goes live, it'll be uh, dropping bombs will be the promo code. So dropping bombs. You'll How about get a, bomb squad? Hey, there you go. Bomb squad. We're going to make a bomb squad promo. You'll get $500 off one of our uh, party pass tickets. Bomb Squad, folks, go out there and freaking get your tickets. Use the thing, Bomb Squad, you get $500 off. Go follow this dude. I know you're going to have a book one of these days. Book will be actually out at the event, so I'm oh, actually yeah? dropping my you book. You do have a book? It's going to be dropping at the event. <laughs> dude, you don't want to miss this event. Appreciate you coming in. Appreciate you having me at the event. And, folks, as always, till next time, keep shit real. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.